Welcome back to the Hall of Origins. We have visited Nintendo's flagship franchise a few times in this series, but it's now time to visit the main man himself. He is one of the most recognizable fictional heroes ever. But not only that, he has been referred to as the most popular video game character of all time. That's right, we're talking about the myth, the legend, the global phenomenon, the video game character all video game characters wish they could be, Super Mario. It's me, Mario! Ah oh, man, I love him, you love him, it's Mario, how can you not? But how did this iconic character get his start? Let's take a look back into the portly plumber's origin. The story of Nintendo's famous mascot starts back at the beginning of the 1980s. A young Shigeru Miyamoto had been working for the company as an artist on video games such as Sheriff and Space Firebird. He was then assigned to a new project of repurposing unsold arcade cabinets of the game Radar Scope into a brand new game, and this new project would become the iconic Donkey Kong. So originally what Shigeru Miyamoto wanted to do was make a game focusing around the characters from the Popeye cartoon. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get the rights for it, so the idea had to be reworked into new characters, but keep the same aesthetic. So the idea was to have a giant gorilla hold a woman captive on top of a tower, and a hero of some sort tasked with climbing the structure to save her. In Japan, this hero character didn't have a name, but when the game was brought over to North America, it included an instruction sheet which listed the hero as Jumpman. When coming up with the look of Jumpman, a lot of it was influenced by graphical limitations of the time. He was put in red overalls with a blue undershirt to contrast against each other as well as the background. This would also make his arms more visible as he moved. Shigeru Miyamoto states that Jumpman was given a hat because he himself wanted to avoid drawing the character's hairstyle, forehead, and eyebrows. This would also double up as a time saver for not having to animate the character's hair as he moved. This is also why Jumpman was given a large nose and mustache so that the facial expressions didn't need to be created either. This is kind of interesting to think about. The Mario that we know today may have looked completely different had it not been for the limitations of the arcade era. But speaking of his name, how did it go from Jumpman to Mario? Well, as the story goes, Nintendo of America rented a warehouse from a real estate developer named Mario Seagal. It was said that while the Nintendo team was working on Donkey Kong, Seagal would have heated arguments about paying back rent for the warehouse they occupied. Because Nintendo wanted proper names for the Donkey Kong characters, whom didn't have official names yet, it was decided to give Jumpman the name Mario after Mr. Seagal. However, there is also a second account of the story. Don James, Nintendo's warehouse manager at the time, stated that the man Mario Seagal, who owned the property, was kind of a recluse type of man that nobody ever saw or met, and that it would be funny if the Jumpman character was named after him. In all honesty, this sounds a little bit more likely, and the whole bursting in, demanding back rent, more dramatizing. So it's more probable that this is how Mario got his name. However, before Mario, Shigeru Miyamoto optioned to name Jumpman Mr. Video. The reason for this was an idea that was thrown around for the Mario character to become a go-to character of sorts. As in, he could be placed into any game when it was needed. Because at the time, Miyamoto didn't expect Mario to become a popular character. So in future games, why not stick the generic hero character in somewhere to save on programming time? You need a random person in the background of Balloon Fight? BAM! Put Mr. Video in there! You need Mock Rider to have a character to show up and give instructions and then disappear? Well, Mr. Video can do that for you. Actually, business-wise, that would have been a pretty cool idea. But even though they didn't go through with this, some remnants of it still did happen, such as Mario serving as the referee in games like Nintendo's Tennis and Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. So with the success of Donkey Kong combined with it being the 80s, it was only natural that a Saturday morning cartoon series was made. In this show, Mario and Pauline try to recapture the escaped Donkey Kong and return him to the circus. Mario, in this iteration, is voiced by Peter Cullen. Don't worry, Pauline. This time he won't get far. Even though he voiced many, many characters throughout his career, he is probably best known as being the official voice of Optimus Prime in the 80s animated show as well as most of his appearances anywhere else, such as the Michael Bay movies. Yeah, wow, who knew that these two characters shared the same voice actor at one point? So a colleague of Miyamoto commented on how Mario was dressed. He thought that his overalls and hat made him look more like a plumber than a carpenter, which is what was thought to have been his profession in Donkey Kong. 
So for the 1983 arcade classic, Mario Brothers, it was decided to put Mario into the sewers and make him into a plumber. And he wasn't alone. He now had a brother who was just a color swap of himself named Luigi. So the point of the game was to rid the sewers of all the enemies that are running around. You jump and hit the ground under your opponents, which causes them to flip over, and then you kick them off screen. Nothing too complicated, but really fun. And even though Mario Brothers was well received, the most important event in the character's career was just around the corner. In 1985, the video game crash of 1983 was still in full effect. The home video gaming consoles were on their last leg when one game appeared and turned everything around. Oh yeah, Super Mario Brothers! This game right here, this game, is why Mario is so popular today. It, along with the entertainment system, revived the video game market. And I don't think I need to talk about it, but let's go into it anyway. Mario and Luigi have been thrust into the Mushroom Kingdom to defeat the King of the Koopas, Bowser, and save Princess Peach. One of the things that made this game famous was its simplicity. You go from one side of the screen to the other, all the while dodging enemies, collecting coins, and finding power-ups. You gotta remember, this was a time when side-scrolling games were not as common as they would become later. In fact, Super Mario Bros. helped popularize the genre and served as a template for many other games to follow. But this entry in the Mario Bros. franchise is what turned the little plumber into a superstar. After this, the Mario Switch had been turned on, and it hasn't been flipped off since. It seemed like Nintendo was working on a new Mario game constantly, and shipping them as soon as they were perfected. And all of this popularity allowed Mario to cross over into other mediums. In 1986, the very first Mario movie was released, titled Super Mario Bros. The Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach. Unfortunately, it was only released in Japan, which, dang, my younger self would have loved to have seen this. But over here in America, we got an animated version of the series too. The Super Mario Bros. Super Show, which took story elements and characters from Super Mario Bros. 1 and 2, along with having live action segments of Mario and Luigi hanging out with a celebrity in each episode. And can I say how cool it is that professional wrestler Captain Lou Albano played and voiced Mario in this? I don't care what anybody says, he's the perfect fit for this, and hey, every kid knew how to do the Mario dance at the end of each episode. This show was so successful that it spun off into two more Mario shows, The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World. This time around, Mario was being voiced by Walker Boone. How come everything I don't like is good for me and everything I do isn't? But of course, not every exploration into media went pleasantly. You no doubt know about the Mario Brothers movie from 1993 and how it bombed and bombed hard, and Nintendo wants you to forget all about it. I personally went to the theater to see it when I was 10 years old, and it is bad, but it's a so bad it's good type of movie. It's a guilty pleasure is what I'm saying, and it's, it's okay for what it is. But where things were still going awesome was over on the Nintendo consoles. Mario was meeting dinosaurs, driving go-karts, and yes, even going 3D. Ah oh man, when I first saw this commercial, I didn't know what to think. How can a game look this good? And for a lot of people, this was the first time hearing Mario's official voice, Charles Martinet. Charles Martinet had actually been working for Nintendo since the early 90s. He did the voice of Mario at trade shows, where guests would talk to a virtual Mario, and he, out of the guest's view, would communicate back to them. I'm guessing that Nintendo still wasn't 100% sure what they wanted Mario to sound like, since Charles was already doing the voice of him at trade shows, so they held an audition, which Charles Martinet crashed. They told him to talk like an Italian plumber from Brooklyn until their recording tape ran out. He did just that, he got the job, and the rest is history. So throughout the next couple decades, Mario continued to give gamers memorable experiences. From cleaning up the island of Delfino in Mario Sunshine, to traveling across space in Mario Galaxy. There was the Mario Kart series, the Mario Party games, Super Smash Bros., and a whole bunch of different sports events. There was a game in this franchise for everyone. So what is Mario doing today? Or at least as of the time this video is being made at the end of 2022. Well, we are only a few months away from the series' newest animated movie from Illuminations. And along with the visuals looking insanely beautiful, it is coming with some controversy. Namely casting Chris Pratt as Mario instead of Charles Martinet. This whole recasting thing with a bigger name actor is unfortunately nothing new. Hollywood always wants to get the most bang for their buck whenever they can, and they figure Chris Pratt will bring in more money than Charles Martinet. 
But I would argue that this is one of the rare situations where it doesn't really matter. The entire Mario brand is bigger than Chris Pratt, and honestly any actor. Just the fact that this is a Mario movie is enough. You don't need a big name attached, the Mario franchise sells itself. And I know, lots of people say that it would get irritating listening to Mario's traditional voice for an hour and a half, but look back at those series of videos where people were asking Mario questions and he responds. I'm here to answer any questions you might have about adventure, or travels, or my new game. If you have any questions for Mario, choose to send me a letter to the email address on the screen. I don't know, I think it's fine. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see how the movie goes when it comes out soon. But even if it doesn't work, we still always have the video games. And hey, they're bright, colorful, fun, and the best part is, they were made so everyone of any skill level can just jump in and immediately have a good time. I enjoyed playing Mario games as a kid, and I still enjoy playing them today. He's just so likable, you can't hate on Mario. He is one of those characters that will definitely live on forever. And I, for one, think he is the greatest video game character of all time.